on. I, okay. Okay. I'm, I can leave now. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I want to go to Hayden in Newark. Oh, oh, you are just priming me today, aren't you? Okay. Hi, Hayden. How are you doing? Sam? Hi, Hayden. Hey, I'm doing good today. How are you? Doing good. Pretty well. What What can we help okay. you with today? Um, well, I wanted to talk about my beliefs in re uh, relation to uh, atheists. Okay. Um, well, let's cover what your beliefs are first. What do you believe? Um, like in relation to atheists or spiritually in general? Um, we just want to make sure that we understand where you're coming from. Yes. So just set us up with a very quick, what are you? Are you a Christian? Are you a Buddhist? Are you a Muslim? Um, well, I believe... I, I believe in something. I, I'm searching for a belief system, I guess. I wouldn't okay. call okay. myself a Christian. Okay. 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 So we know we know where you're coming from. Right. That gives us good grounding okay. to continue the conversation. So thank you. Um, so what what do you believe about atheists then? Um, I believe that atheists sort of adopt this sort of, uh, I don't want to say like a superiority complex, but a sort of like, I'm more intelligent than you. I uh, need to talk down to you and make you feel like a lesser person because you're an atheist, because you're a theist. And I don't like that. And I, I was wondering what your opinions on that was. Because I called in about this last week and a lot of people proved my point in the comments. Well, so. okay. Okay. So, oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> let, me, let me take this first. Go ahead. Um, go ahead. This no, will go yeah. one of two ways. Yeah, um, and I'm going to let you leave this one. So, okay, Hayden. Um, so my first thought is that, yeah, I agree with you to a certain extent. There are atheists out there that are insufferable. Oh yeah, and <laughs> they are very loud, especially in things like YouTube comments and YouTube in general. Mm -hmm. Uh, YouTube, in general, YouTube in general and on Twitter and there's a whole subsection of atheism that just happens on Twitter and Tumblr <laughs> and all of these websites where it's it's really bad like not to it's not toxic. to knock anybody but no, like but there are certain there are certain groups that post memes basically all all day and they're the worst fucking memes of uh, like haha gotcha we're atheists so we're smarter and it it's not helpful and I do my best to not do mm. that um, some mm. of them are funny. Some of them, you know, scratch an itch, I guess. Yeah. But at the same time, it's they, not they a good scratch a petty itch every once in a while, and it's right, like, oh, I want right. to be petty. This is cute. But yeah, I think on one level that's accurate. Yeah. I think on another level, this might be coming back to the whole primacy bias thing we were talking about with the last mm -hmm. caller, where if you are looking for a specific type of person to act in a specific type of way, you're going to see it more often. And you're going to look for the clue mm -hmm. that this is how they are being in everything right. they say, right? Right. So my question for you is, um, how have you come to the conclusion that it is atheists in general and not specific people who also happen to be atheists? Um, I because I feel like people who used to not be atheists and then became atheists, okay. then it it suddenly it's like something transforms in them and they like sort of gain some sort of bragging rights, wherein they suddenly become this sort of atheist archetype that I'm describing. And that looks like it happened with all of them, but I've seen it happen where they've gained this if they become an atheist or they lose that sort of archetype if they become a theist again. I have mm -hmm. to ask, have, or is this coming from individual one-on-one -on -one conversations that you're having or are you watching atheist influencers and atheist personalities that you're um, kind of gathering this from? I, I'd say it's uh, it's I say it's both. It's one-on-one -on -one conversations with uh, atheists and so-called skeptics, and then and, also. And what platform like, though are these one-on-one -on -one conversations you're having in person with people you know, or are you um, kind yeah, of going into Twitter and going into Discord and kind of seeking atheists to question? Uh, I've had conversations in real life too. It's personal experience with. Myself okay. and other people. I was going to say, because right. if you're on Twitter and Discord and like actively hunting loud atheists, that's, you're going to get a loud atheist. Oh. Yeah, you're, you're yeah. going to, yeah, you're going to get a loud and obnoxious atheist. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I agree with V. There are some, and I love my community, but some of you are like, you are literally no worse than the Christians yelling at us and coming into our space and having to bulldoze into these spaces that you're so superior. Mm -hmm. 
I and I, yeah. I especially understand new atheists. Well, yeah, that's that what come I was into gonna, it. Yeah. I was going to jump in on that as well. I think that what you're picking up on is what people in the atheist community call the angry atheist phase. Um, yep. And this is something <laughs> that is real, and it does happen. I went through it. I look back at old twi- uh, Twitter account happenings, and Cringe. I'm like, oh, no. <laughs> I delete, act- delete, delete, I- delete. No, I don't delete it. I own that shit. I'm like, this was me. I was an atheist, bro, and I am so sorry. <gasps> oh. I was. Um, sorry. No, but, yeah, what you're picking up on, especially talking about deconverts from other religions, uh, A, It is a huge undertaking and a huge process of breaking everything down, at least in that category of your thought processes, and building it back up. Um, So a lot of people, rightly, I would say, feel like they've got a better understanding of themselves. They've got a better understanding of the world and their place in it. And sometimes it's very anger-driven. They feel like they were lied to. Right. And then comes in the emotional component, which is, yeah, they're fucking angry uh, because they feel betrayed. They feel like they've been given a false view of the world. and, And now people in their lives are probably shunning them or telling them that they are going to hell. And all of this is very emotionally triggering. So, yes, there is definitely a phase that a lot of people who deconvert and go into atheism uh, go through that where they are louder, where they are more obnoxious, where they are angrier. And they're very hoity. Right. And they think, oh, I figured everything out. I'm so woke. It's kind of like, well, the woke atheist is a whole other Venn diagram. We don't have enough time on this show to get into that part. But but no, I think I think you're you're. You're not imagining things like you're. Yeah. You're spot on. No, in that they're definitely analysis. out there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's just. I I think where I would push back the most is uh, assuming that it's just atheists A or, by or having an issue with atheists being haughty and being full of themselves or superior in particular. Yeah. Um, have you talked to a Southern Baptist Christian? A church representative recently. <laughs> Not to call out any specific denomination, but That'd there are tired some. Just hearing it. There are some. <laughs> there are in every group, right? Mm-hmm. In every single group, yeah. there are going to be those loud, obnoxious people that yeah, you know yeah. probably feel super passionate about what they believe or don't. Um, but, you know, just, uh, are grating. And sadly, they're the loudest, so they're the people that are going to draw you into the conversation even more. I would honestly yeah. say, you know, take a step back, especially if you find a group of atheists or you see, a, a, especially on Twitter, if you see a thread yeah. on atheist discussions and don't immediately jump in because then it's like, whoa, you're immediately on the attack. This person's immediately coming at me as soon as I open my mouth. So that's mm-hmm. going to make people a little bit more defensive. Sit back, hear the conversation out, figure which way it's going. And if they're getting on the hoity, I'm so much better than you because everything is science now, which... Mm. You know, if, if it's going that way, just go, okay, maybe this isn't the conversation for me to engage in. Right. Or right. maybe there is somebody else who is engaging in the conversation that is equally as tired. Mm-hmm. And you can engage in a conversation with them. Right. You don't need to have yeah. conversations with every person, especially if they are being kind of aggravating and annoying. And condescending. But I would say just taken taken away. I, I don't look at the... the sandwich board street preacher no. with a megaphone on the side of the street yelling at people that they're going to hell as a representation of all Christians, right? Because right. I understand that that's a specific mm-hmm. type of person and they probably have motivations for doing it that way and I disagree with it and I think it's annoying as fuck and I wish they'd shut up and go away, but also that is that person. I call them atheist preachers mm-hmm. is what I call them. <laughs> so, so there's a, I, I think my... My takeaway from this for you would be making sure that you don't lump everybody into the same category just because they share a label. Guilt by association Mm -hmm. cuts out a lot of really good people that could teach. I mean, I have polytheistic friends. I have monotheistic friends that aren't crazy. You're going to hell. And there's some of the best people in the world. But I didn't go paint with the broad brush. Right. So, yeah, take a step back. Watch the conversations first. And then see... Okay, maybe these are not the kind of people I want to engage with. Maybe these are, because I promise you, not all of us, not all atheists are like that. We, we'll refer back to science and we'll say, "Well, I've studied this," but not all of us are like, oh, "I've studied this and I have a degree, and this is why your um, opinion is no longer important." No, not all of us are like that. Yep. Some of us try not to. Be. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, I'll be in the I'll be in the YouTube comments replying to all the people who who. Okay, are YouTube. Start coming out with the YouTube. Phone. I love YouTube. I hate YouTube. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I I make it a point never to respond to any comments. I read all of them. 
Unless it was like a clarifying, mm-hmm. somebody's asking me a question. Yes. But oh, I watch them. I don't respond. And it actually, <laughs> it keeps it keeps me cool, yeah. it keeps me calm. Also remember that when you're dealing with social media, you're dealing with people behind a handle. And they feel a little yeah, more bold true. because of that. Right. And they're trying to get comments noticed. They're trying to be addressed. So they may be saying the most shocking things possible just to get noticed. Yeah. Also keep Yeah, definitely. Right. I would definitely you'll, say you'll see me in there. to change the to change <laughs> the narrative a bit, I would definitely say try to approach people more one on one than in a group. It's already a hot topic situation setting. Yeah. Where everyone's already on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, I, I would definitely agree with that. Yeah, I would see me in there. I'll be Blue Cat One K is my username. So okay, anyway. well we'll right. be reading. Yeah. <laughs> not responding, but we'll be not reading. responding. All we'll right, we'll be reading. Thanks so much, Hayden. Okay. Thanks, Hayden. Thank you so much. Bye. I think another thing that I I was going to touch on and decided against it, at least on the phone call, was the concept that humility and uh, a lack of asserting oneself is considered to be a good thing in many religions, especially the ones that are dominant right. here. So it might not even be but there that can also they're be being a more... That, especially with um, gendered men mm-hmm. and what I like to coin toxic masculinity to where if you are empathetic and you are humble and you admit, I don't know this, you're weak. Mm-hmm. So it becomes this raging battleground. Well, right, because nobody <laughs> nobody has the, the pinpoint on exactly what makes somebody a weak or a strong right. person, but when an atheist, when somebody, I know for me, I became a lot more outspoken. I'm here mm. on a fucking YouTube show. Um, this would never have been possible even in my own head as a, as a Christian right. because I was told that that kind of presentation and that kind of being out there and speaking for mm. myself was not okay. Yeah. So if somebody that you know is no longer a Christian um, and they have uh, deconverted, part of that newfound, what you would call superiority, might actually just be a healthy sense of self-worth and, and that they're, they're they discovering may be for the first time. Right, they may be overcorrecting because they can, they feel like they can use right, their voice, exactly. so they want to, it's like a kid with a new toy. I'm going to play with this toy until mommy tells me it doesn't have batteries and it broke and they don't make batteries anymore. Mm. And they, you know, we. I think we all got into that when we were atheists. I can speak now, and oh yeah, you so have to I'm speak gonna, on all the things. So I'm not going to fucking shut up. Yeah, you have to talk on all the things. 